Hi everyone, and thank you for attending today. We'll be starting the webinar now, and today we'll be looking at Abacus 6.0, which is the upcoming release. That's something that we're very excited about. It is uh, one of the largest releases that we've done in a very long time, and it has some really game-changing features in it. So we'll be sure to cover some of the top features today, but there's so many that uh, unfortunately we won't have time for everything. We'll go for about 30 minutes and then we'll leave some time at the end for Q&A. Uh, so if you have questions, be sure to hang around and we'll be able to take those at the end. Uh, just pop them into the chat window and we'll address them uh, in the order they come. So before we get too stuck into what 6.0 is, just a little bit of background about the company and who we are for those who are new to us. So Avolution is our company. Uh, we've been around for uh, 17 years now, building the Abacus toolset for enterprise architecture. And we've come a long way since the early days when we started as a spin-off company from the University of Technology in Sydney, Australia. We now reach across 100 countries. There's over 2,000 companies that we work with today. Uh, we support them from six global offices. Um, our headquarters remains in Sydney, but uh, we work all across the globe. Uh, in terms of how our tool is perceived, we are a leader in uh, the Gartner Magic Quadrant and the Forrester Wave. Uh, what I think is one of the most um, insightful resources is uh, Gartner's Peer Insights, and that's basically a portal for um, different users uh, to be able to go in and uh, log about their experience. And currently we have an average score of uh, 4.7 across our many reviews, and so we are one of the highest rated tools in all of Peer Insights. Um, we do work with over 50 partners across the globe, and uh, we work with a variety of uh, different industries, uh, basically all the different major verticals. And we've been growing very strongly over the years uh, in excess of 30% year on year. And I suppose it's because of a lot of that growth um, that we had to take a step back with uh, Abacus 6.0 and think about how things are changing and how we'd like to make sure that we're uh, staying on the cutting edge of uh, where we go with enterprise architecture. And so a lot of the um, features that have gone into 6.0 have come from um, client feedback, um, in particular with our experiences engaging with clients and um, understanding some of their pain points and how we can better address their use cases as they've been changing over time. Now, um, part of our support for uh, all the different industries that we um, are involved in um, comes back to our uh, framework support. Uh, we do support over 100 different freely available frameworks. Uh, many of them ship with the tool. Um, others you can download from our community. And they cover a lot of the major things like uh, TOGAF and Archimate, uh, but it also covers very uh, specific industry verticals such as BN, which is used for banking, or um, MITRE in US Medicaid, for example. Um, so if there's a framework that's in industry standard that's commonly used in your industry, chances are that we do support it and uh, you can bring in the pieces of that framework into your model uh, to ensure you're following best practices. Now coming back to uh, the meat of the webinar, which will be uh, the upcoming release of Abacus 6.0. Um, it will be available in the next few weeks. Um, it's slated for a November release. Um, we had to take a step back and have a think about how we see enterprise architecture and where we feel it fits in the organisation. And really we see EA as being the heart of your digital business. And so if we look at the kinds of things that enterprise architects do, uh, they're very heavily involved in capturing data. It might be from eliciting information from different stakeholders in meetings, uh, or it might be taking their information from spreadsheets and uploading it, or potentially it might be integrating with other tools as well. Ultimately though, what the EA um, needs to be able to do is communicate their findings to various stakeholders that need to consume that information. And there's a whole variety of ways in which that can be done. Uh, but unfortunately, because EA is so um, process intensive in uh, going out and collecting information and doing analysis, oftentimes that final step of getting details out to customers and to uh, other stakeholders um, is overlooked a little bit, and uh, ultimately it is one of the most important things. So we've tried to look at how we can improve that final piece. And what we realized is that 
if the EAs are spending a lot of time uh, getting information from those stakeholders in order to present findings to them, uh, we could essentially turn that on its head to some extent. So right now the enterprise architect does a lot of work for these stakeholders, but we thought what would happen if we were able to get the stakeholders now also working for the enterprise architects? So we look at how we can democratise the collection of data so that uh, the enterprise architects don't have to be the middleman. Um, stakeholders can provide their data directly to the tool and then get the insights from the tool directly without having to have involvement um, from the enterprise architects at all times. Uh, the enterprise architects, of course, are still critical. They need to build the structures that are needed in order to um, be able to facilitate all of this and uh, do a lot of the deeper analysis. Uh, but ultimately, a lot of it can be done uh, by the end stakeholders themselves. And so that's what brings us to uh, this release with 6.0. The biggest piece that we have is a new platform, which we're calling Abacus Enterprise. And it pulls a functionality from a few different pieces of Abacus as you know it today, uh, but it also goes into uncharted waters that have never been touched in Abacus or in any other enterprise architecture tool. And so uh, one of the biggest things with that is the ability to have users go in uh, through uh, a browser-based dashboard and edit information catalogs directly through it and see how those changes in real time affect other parts of their enterprise architecture. Now, I can't stress how uh, big of a deal that is, but I'll come back and visit in more detail. But for now, let me just cover off a few of the other high level points and then we'll get into the more detailed view of each of them. Uh, we've also covered a lot of ground in improving uh, the modeling and diagramming experiences um, in Abacus. Um, so the traditional client uh, that a lot of users have as their uh, view into Abacus is what we're now calling Abacus Studio. Uh, it's sometimes deployed as a desktop client. Uh, we do also offer it as a cloud platform, uh, but it's essentially the place where you go to build diagrams um, and configure uh, different parts of Abacus. Uh, and so we've basically removed a lot of unnecessary menus and simplified the menus. Uh, we've also improved um, the color palettes and various things like that uh, to make sure that users can work a lot more efficiently. There's been uh, a lot of improvements to the way that architecture diff and sync work. Um, the mechanisms on the back end uh, we've been working on for a long time and we've finally, uh, finally come around full force uh, to exploit that to its full advantage in the front end. We've looked to improve uh, the API. Uh, that was one of the keynote features from Abacus 5.2. Um, now in 5.2, it gave you very extensive uh, capabilities for querying the model, uh, but it didn't allow you to update the model. So that's the most significant change here. You can now essentially update Abacus without ever having to use Abacus um, by using the API. You can have other tools plug in directly to Abacus and keep it up to date without having to worry about opening Abacus or doing anything in Abacus at all. And uh, one of the other big things is the Visual Algorithm Composer. So uh, one of the key highlights with Abacus has always been the ability to run rich algorithms against your repository so that you can measure your architectures and understand how making change impacts the greater architecture and not just the object itself. Um, the problem with that has been that there is a bit of a technical uh, learning curve getting beyond uh, being able to define business rules and get them into Abacus. Uh, we've supported different scripting languages to be able to do that. Uh, but now we have the visual ability to build simple algorithms. Uh, and in fact, uh, not just simple algorithms, but uh, complicated ones that support attribution and aggregation. And so uh, now by simply understanding the business logic, uh, you can use a very easy uh, to use composer to be able to build the algorithms that you need. So that's an incredibly powerful feature. Also, before moving on, um, just quickly, uh, there is some improvements in uh, single sign-on support. Uh, we support um, SAML2 as well as OpenID now, in addition to uh, WS Federation. And uh, we've made a number of tweaks uh, to handle different um, systems that uh, handle the data a little bit differently. 
Um, we've also uh, built real-time repository browsing into the new enterprise platform, which we'll look at shortly. Uh, and the enterprise platform includes a number of interesting visualizations. One of those in particular is the Sankey chart, which shows a flow of information between entities. Uh, but altogether, there's over 100 new enhancements that go into 6.0. So uh, it's been a lot of work, uh, but it's been very satisfying. And uh, I'm very excited that it's now going live and that everyone's going to have the chance to use these new features uh, because many of them really are game changers. So if we take a step back and have a look at Abigas Enterprise, I think it's important just to look at the architecture of it so you understand where it fits in uh, with the rest of Abacus. So I talked about the Abacus client uh, software, the you know, basically the um, product that you install on your desktop or you have deployed through the cloud uh, that you access. Um, so that's not going away. Um, that's still to be used by the core EA team for configuration of the meta model and uh, doing diagramming and things like that. Uh, but now we have running separately to that the Abacus Enterprise product. So it's a fully web-based product. Um, it allows you to uh, run as a web application in IIS and it connects to the same backend repository uh, that Abacus Studio uses. Um, with Abacus Studio, you stage your um, commits through uh, subversion-like commands and uh, they uh, get your data into the repository and provide you with updates from other users. Abacus Enterprise um, takes a step away from that, so it does have that mechanism built into it. Uh, but the users don't have to know anything about it. They simply update their data and Abacus looks after everything else for them. And so what you see with Abacus Enterprise are web-based dashboards, like the one you can see in this particular slide, uh, showing various different visualizations. You'll see there's some visualizations there you may not have seen before, like tree maps. Uh, some of those came from other places like Abacus Intelligence, um, which uh, some of our clients were using, uh, but now they're much easier to set up in Abacus Enterprise and they use the latest data from your repository directly. Catalogs, as I've um, mentioned already, uh, can be edited by uh, users uh, that have uh, editing rights. Um, that all plays in with the permissions model that we already have baked into Abacus. So you can set up role-based access uh, some users might be able to log in and change certain catalogs, but not others. They might also be able to change certain columns in uh, some catalogs, but some of the columns may not be editable because of their permissions. Uh, furthermore, some of the columns may not appear to them if they don't have read access for a certain property. They won't see it in the column or in any of the other visualizations that might reference that particular property. So from a security perspective, I know a lot of people uh, have used uh, what's called Abacus Publisher in the past, uh, but you basically have a one-size-fits-all security profile, uh, but now each user can have their own individual security profile. Uh, it is role-based, so you manage them by groups, but you can create as many uh, groups as you like and assign permissions to those groups. So that way you've got much finer control over who has access to what. Now with the browser editable catalogs, it is as simple as clicking on a cell and making changes to it. If it's a text-based field, you'll be able to simply type into the cell. If it's a list-based field, then you can select from any of the um, predefined enumerations that uh, you have in Abacus. Uh, if it's an attached component column, then you can actually uh, double click and select from the list of components that are valid to be connected in that area. Uh, but it's more than just that. If you need to create new components, you can do that through the catalog as well. Um, that will bring up a very easy to use form. And in that form, it uh, provides all the required properties. Uh, so that way you don't have to worry about people creating incomplete data. Um, they'll provide all of the fields that are required. And um, that way you won't have to worry about half completed forms and having to have the EA team clean up uh, some of that data afterwards. For users that uh, are not um, too comfortable using the web for whatever reason, uh, we do also have the ability to just download an Excel copy. So they can download the catalog and they can make their changes in Excel and send it back to the core EA team. 
and they can then use Abacus Studio to import those changes back into Abacus with the click of a button. Uh, also constraints are considered as part of the catalogs. So uh, for example, if you have a date column, it provides you with a date selector. Um, so you can't just enter any random text. Uh, same with the list columns, as I mentioned, they make sure that you uh, select from the uh, values in the enumeration. Uh, so you don't have to worry about people entering invalid data uh, for the cells. Um, those constraints are configurable through the meta model, of course, uh, through Abacus Studio. And so you can decide exactly what kind of structure uh, those data entities should take on. One of the really cool things about uh, the web-based catalogs, which you simply wouldn't get in Studio or in any other tool um, involving enterprise architecture for that fact, is the ability to co-author information concurrently with other users. Um, so you might be able to see in this uh, visualization here, um, we've got some edits going on. And you'll notice that other cells are being highlighted in different colors. And that's actually representing that that cell is being edited by another user at the same time. So that way you can easily avoid people trying to update the same information at once and write, overriding each other's information accidentally. You'll be able to see when someone goes into a cell and you'll know, okay, well maybe I'll hold off before editing that. Uh, people can also edit different um, properties of the same component at once. And you'll be able to see, well, they're editing that property, so I'll edit this one. If you hover over the um, highlight, you'll be able to see the name of the user that's doing the edits. So it's an incredibly rich editing environment. Um, it's a lot more than just doing Excel catalogs or anything like that. Um, it really is a game changer in the way that people can work together in a team. Um, if you have to worry less about stepping on each other's toes, you can focus more on what you need to do to be productive and to get the information that you need. I mentioned uh, browser on the callouts before. Um, for those of you familiar with um, Abacus Publisher, uh, the view that you see here will be somewhat familiar. We've basically recreated the look and feel of Publisher um, in one of the parts of Abacus Enterprise, uh, which is called the browser dashboard. So it basically lets you browse through the repository. Uh, you can show the, uh, the tree view of the repository and, and go through it, or you can just go through diagrams and then drill down into different areas. Um, so it, it's basically a free-for-all search, uh, so you can find information that may not have been built into dashboards yet. Uh, it does also have a search feature, so you can um, click down at the bottom left and search through the Explorer tree to find what you're looking for. Uh, but it is a little bit different to Publisher in a couple of ways that are quite significant. Firstly, uh, because Abacus Enterprise uh, supports single sign-on, you don't have to worry about having a single uh, login uh, that everyone uses or having to set up manual passwords for people that they have to remember. Uh, they can just use their organization credentials. If they're logged into Windows and they use Internet Explorer, then it will simply load without them having to even uh, log in at all. Um, so that gets people in. Once they're inside, we also have the um, role-based permissions built in now, so you don't have to worry about having a certain publisher profile. Uh, basically, everyone will have a view tailored to them and their uh, permissions specifically, so they won't see objects that they shouldn't be privy to. And um, most importantly, it just removes a lot of the noise of elements that they don't need to have to see. And uh, the other thing that's uh, quite significant is the fact that it's built directly off the repository. Um, so you're getting a live view of the data that you have in Abacus. You don't have to worry for a published process to complete, which generates uh, numerous HTML and uh, other supporting files. Uh, for some of the larger models, uh, that did take several hours to do. So it wasn't something you could do constantly. You'd probably be doing it once a day at best. And now you no longer have to worry about that. As soon as changes get made and get committed to the repository, they'll be available for people to view through this browser view. Now there's a number of um, interesting visualizations um, that are used in enterprise, which provide you with some deeper insights uh, you may not be familiar with. Uh, so things like tree maps and petition maps. Uh, we also have um, 
uh, sunburst diagrams and uh, hierarchical bar charts. Uh, one of the other ones that we have that I'm calling out here are the Senki charts. So uh, Senki diagrams essentially let you view the flow of information. So if you have a look at this example here, uh, this is the details page for our CRM application. And in the middle, um, you can see that the CRM application is that uh, pink colored box. And the size of the box is representing the cost that's associated with CRM in this example. Uh, you don't have to use cost, you can use any property that you like that's numeric. And then we've got certain elements that are flowing into it, and those are on the left hand side. So those elements each have a cost that's being attributed to the CRM application. So it's got its own costs, such as um, the vendor support that we pay for it, but it also has things like the cost of servers that it uses and other um, information services. So those get factored in. And then on the other side, we can see how the costs of the CRM get attributed to different departments and services. Um, so you can see exactly what comes in and what goes out in terms of cost. And of course you can do that for any property. So it's really powerful for being able to see how information flows throughout your um, enterprise architecture. Now with um, having uh, Abacus Enterprise as a web-based offering, you can of course just access it through your browser. However, uh, oftentimes if you're using things like uh, Microsoft Teams and various other um, collaboration products, um, it's useful to be able to embed what you have in those platforms. And so uh, internally we actually use um, Abacus Enterprise through Teams. Um, we are big users of Microsoft Teams, uh, but it works with SharePoint and various other things that uh, you might be using in your organization. Uh, and basically you can um, have people simply navigate to a new tab in Teams or whatever the platform is. And on that tab, they'll see one of the dashboard views from Abacus Enterprise. Uh, they can then make changes as they like to those dashboards. And then they can go about uh, the rest of what they do in that particular um, collaboration product uh, without even having to know that they're using Abacus Enterprise. Uh, they don't even have to know that they've logged into it because that can be handled through single sign-on. Once they open up Teams, uh, they'll be authenticated and that authentication will pass through into Abacus Enterprise. Of course, we do still have the ability to do bulk uploads with uh, other Microsoft products like Excel, Visio, and SharePoint. So none of that has changed. Ultimately, we um, have always been big supporters of the Microsoft stack um, because we know how common they are and pervasive they are throughout business. Um, so it's important to be able to make sure that you can expose your information to users who are familiar with those platforms. Now coming to the Visual Algorithm Composer, this is a really exciting feature. Um, as I mentioned at the start, a lot of organizations like to use Abacus because of its ability to uh, run algorithms and produce KPIs to measure objectively uh, different parts of their architecture. The problem with that has been uh, the steepness of the learning curve in terms of you need to have some kind of uh, development knowledge to be able to build scripts that you can build algorithms out of. We do have some pre-built in algorithms such as cost and complexity, uh, but for anything that you want more specific to your organization, traditionally you've had to go the scripting route. But now you can do that with visual algorithms. Basically it works like a flow chart. Uh, there's a start point and you can show the flow of um, what steps you would like to happen in your algorithm. So you might select certain component types uh, and you'll select certain properties within them and do certain things with those properties. And you might uh, aggregate those properties together and attribute them to another property. And that property might be on the same component or it might be on a different component. So it's very flexible in the way that it works and allows you to do all the basic operations that are needed for uh, the majority of algorithms that you would build in Abacus. So uh, you can do things like summing, uh, getting the min, the max, the average, or the count of uh, different properties. And uh, we've been uh, working with a few uh, people already in building algorithms that they use in their organization. Uh, we've already built things like uh, the ability to 
um, measure the, the carbon emissions or the green footprint of a data center. Uh, so essentially measuring the kilowatt hours of all the different devices that are there and seeing how making changes to your configuration can impact that underlying metric. Uh, you might also look at things like uh, business fit or uh, the technical fit of applications or their cloud readiness score for moving an application to the cloud. So there's quite a lot that you can do. Um, but this is just the beginning. So while you can do a lot um, over the next few releases, we will be releasing additional functionality. There'll be additional operations in Abacus 6.1 and other features beyond that. So uh, be sure to watch this space. Um, but definitely uh, think about how you might be able to make use of that in your organization um, to measure things that tr traditionally might have been uh, considered too hard to do. Now, with the algorithms, um, it's not just about being able to build and run the algorithm, it's about how you can service that algorithm to. So we've built in the ability to auto schedule an algorithm so that it can be run at any time. And we've done the same for the existing scripts um, that you have in Abacus, so you can actually manage them through the same interface. And you can decide when they should be run, whether it's a script or a visual algorithm. Um, it might be on a regular scheduled basis, or it might be after certain events, such as when um, there's been a Technopedia sync or a sync with ServiceNow, or every time there's been a commit um, by another user. So uh, those are all things that can be set up. And uh, that way you don't have to worry about remembering to manually run things and keeping your information up to date. Uh, that can be handled automatically. All of those um, algorithms and scripts are run through the abacus.console uh, application. Uh, that's basically the command line um, version of Abacus. Um, if you're not familiar with that, you will find it in your installation directory. Um, and if you run that as a service on one of your servers, it will just run constantly, uh, check for updates, and run any of these scheduled things that need to be carried out. Also, you can share algorithms between projects. Um, so typically they do get saved in your project, uh, but you can also save them out to a format that you can then open up in another Abacus project. Uh, so if you're working with another organization and uh, they have some good ideas they'd like to share with you, um, if they've built some algorithms, they can certainly just send those to you or if you've got multiple projects that you're using, um, you can simply take the algorithm from one and put it into another. Now, with uh, gap analysis and architecture sync, those are things that we've always had in Abacus, at least from a very early time. Uh, that was one of the uh, very fundamental features that uh, differentiated Abacus, the ability to model multiple states so that you can look at uh, different scenarios and then uh, measure those and, uh, and look at trade-offs as to uh, which scenario might be the optimal solution going forward. And so we have all of that functionality still, but it's been greatly improved. Uh, what you can do now is uh, make use of a back-end ID that keeps track of uh, which items in which architecture came from where. Um, so that way, when you do a gap analysis using catalogs or diagrams, um, it will simply uh, use that ID. It makes it much faster and um, much more efficient. Uh, it also makes it much more accurate. Uh, before it had to rely on things like the name of the component and its hierarchical position. And if those things changed, then oftentimes uh, it wouldn't get detected that that was in fact the same component. Uh, but now it will know straight away that that was the case. In addition to that, it's gone a whole step further. You can do uh, diffing and syncing directly through the Explorer tree. Uh, this means you can do everything in one view. Uh, you don't have to have a catalog for each uh, different component type and uh, review them separately. You can do it all in one place. And you can in fact sync all the changes from one architecture to another um, in one simple place. So if you're looking at, for example, modeling a scenario, you're not sure whether that's going to go live, but then it gets the green light and then you want to merge those changes back into your uh, current state production architecture, then you can do that with one simple menu. You can also update the scenarios that you have with changes that have been made to your baseline, also through the same simple menu. So um, it really is a game changer in making that much easier and more efficient to use. 
Now, of course, uh, road mapping is one of our passions at Avolution, and uh, we've kept that at the forefront of uh, all the changes that we've made with 6.0. Um, all the features that you'd know about, the different types of roadmaps that we support are still there, and we've gone to efforts to make sure that you can uh, use those uh, easily in Abacus Enterprise. A lot of things like Sankey diagrams can help with that as well if you need to show flow um, in terms of understanding the impacts uh, between different things when you're looking at uh, what's going to be affected by certain changes. So, um, and especially with the ability to present this information through these web dashboard views, um, it gives you a very easy way of getting that message out to various stakeholders who before you might have had to set up meetings with or give them more paper-based reports. Um, so now it's just a much simpler experience to get them straight into the repository. We do also have uh, the enhancements I mentioned with the REST API. Um, so the main thing is that now there are writable endpoints. So you can update properties, you can create new components, you can uh, make all kinds of changes to the object model that's in Abacus directly from outside tools. So you can simply use that REST API and once those calls are made, um, they do update the Abacus repository. So users can essentially update information in Abacus by simply doing their day job using the tools that they're familiar with, and those changes can get through, uh, fed through to Abacus. Now, with the API, um, it was new in Abacus 5.2, and it was used through that abacus.console application. Uh, traditionally, it was called abacus.server. Um, that um, is still supported, but we do also expose the REST API through Abacus Enterprise as well. And we do recommend that. Um, firstly, it's much simpler to deploy. And secondly, it allows you to get those uh, changes straight into the live web model. Um, so you don't have to worry about it going through the backend database and then syncing back, uh, which traditionally there wouldn't be much of a delay. It might be five minutes. Um, but it's much better if you can get that data through instantly. So getting it straight to Abacus Enterprise is the way to go if you can do it that way. Now it's not just about the features with uh, 6.0, although I could, uh, I could get very excited and stay here for a while longer and keep talking about them. Um, but the libraries are also important. Uh, to be able to make sure you get the most out of Abacus using best practice solutions. Uh, so there's been quite a lot of updates, uh, but the four most significant ones I have on this slide, um, as you might be aware, Archimate uh, 3.0 came out uh, fairly recently, and uh, now there's Abacus, sorry, Archimate 3.0.1, uh, which is what we're supporting. Um, so we do have the library uh, that comes with Abacus. Uh, but we do also have uh, full support for the Exchange file format. And we were, in fact, the first uh, tool uh, to be able to demonstrate uh, the import and export of that format um, with the test mechanisms that the open group specifies. Um, and so as far as I'm aware, I think we are the only tool that has passed that certification so far. Um, so Archimate is very tightly uh, tied to the core of Abacus. Um, if you need to use Archimate, then you've got full support for it there. Also, TOGAF 9.2 came out. Um, really, I would describe those as subtle changes, uh, but we've certainly upgraded our libraries to support those changes there. BN 7.0 came out uh, very recently, in fact. Um, so we now support that as well. Um, we have the full service landscape in there, and that is a, a library that's very useful for banks um, it's becoming uh, very quickly adopted as the uh, standard service model that banks like to have, and they can tie the rest of their architecture back to it. And then uh, BPMN 2.0, the standard is still the same, but we have made some tweaks to our um, meta model library for it, uh, just to make it easier to use and make it a bit more appealing. So um, BPMN, of course, does tie in very well with a lot of other frameworks. It gives you the process modeling notation if you need to do process models. Um, especially with BN, we see them go hand in hand all the time. So you can certainly pick and choose from any of these frameworks and integrate them into your Abacus project as you need. We've also uh, just launched a new Abacus community. Um, so uh, we're using new technologies for that now. 
Um, but we've got forums and various knowledge base articles up on that forum. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, be sure to go to the um, the start the sorry the homepage for Avolution, um, AvolutionSoftware.com, and at the top right you'll see uh, the login button. One of the links there takes you to the community. Uh, once you've got an ID, you can log in and access the full content. Otherwise, any user can just access the basic Abacus Academy introductory tutorials. Um, but it's a great place to go and find out more information. Uh, we've put a lot of videos on there and step-by-step -step tutorials. Um, so it's a really great resource. And if you haven't seen it yet, I can't recommend it strongly enough. Now, as for all the other features, um, I won't cover in detail today. There are a few I'll just call out quickly. Um, so one of them is that we've exposed hierarchy level as a fundamental attribute in Abacus. Uh, that means you can show the hierarchy level in catalogs, for example. Um, you can also show it in diagrams, uh, which is very useful if you're showing, say, a capabilities model, which is uh, multi-level. You can also um, enjoy a lot of the performance improvements that we've put in. Some of those have been rolled out in patches, so some of our larger clients would be uh, using those already, uh, but there are others in 6.0, especially around the way that that um, commit and update process works in Abacus Studio. Uh, it makes it much quicker and much more robust, so um, those features I know uh, will be welcome to uh, many users that have larger models. There's a lot of uh, improvements to the UI itself. Uh, just one example, you can expand and collapse all properties rather than having to do them one group at a time. Um, just a lot of things to make um, life a bit easier and improve your productivity. Uh, one that I'm uh, very happy about, in fact, is the ability to collapse connection shortcuts under one node. So if you have, for example, an application and it's associated with uh, dozens of different processes, uh, traditionally, if you expanded that application, you would see each of those individual connections below it. If you wanted to see subcomponents, you'd have to scroll past all of them to find them. Uh, but now they do get condensed under one node, um, so it just makes it much easier to see what's what uh, and be able to find the information that you're looking for. I mentioned before our SEML support. Uh, we've improved it uh, in a number of ways, but most significantly, we do support SAML2 and OpenID. Uh, that works with both, both uh, Abacus Enterprise as well as Abacus Cloud. Um, so you can have users log in without having to remember passwords or IDs or anything like that. And uh, you can ensure that they're using best practice security. We also support uh, square property markers now in diagrams. Uh, viewpoints can be merged, uh, so you don't have to do that manually anymore. Um, and then uh, clicking on an annotation in a diagram will select its associated shape. Uh, so I know there's been some situations where people have had annotations going over the top of other shapes and so forth, and it makes things a little bit tricky to select. Um, now it's a much easier thing to do. And then there are over 100 new features in addition to these. Um, so be sure to look at the release notes when the release does come out and uh, see what some of those things are. Great, so that's everything that we wanted to cover in terms of the major things for 6.0 today. Uh, thank you very much for attending. Um, I will stay on the line for a few extra minutes for those who have any additional questions. Um, but otherwise, thanks very much for being here today. Um, just in terms of next steps, uh, the release will be coming out um, in uh, subsequent weeks. So you will see an email about that um, and it will give you the download instructions on how to get up to date with uh, Abacus 6.0. Um, if you are new to Abacus, uh, do be aware we do have the 30-day trial that you can download through our website. Uh, my details are also on this page if you do need to get in touch with me about anything regarding the release. Uh, but thanks once again for attending. I'll uh, go through the questions now that have come through the chat window. If there's any others, just let me know and uh, we'll be able to go through them as they come through. Okay, so there's quite a few there. I probably won't get time to do all of them today, but um, if there's any that don't get addressed, uh, please do email us and we'll be able to help you out. There's a question about logging uh, with Abacus Enterprise and uh, specifically with the browser. Um, 
with the browser view, uh, do we have some kind of logging? Um, we are looking to do a lot more logging in Abacus 6.1, uh, the release that will be out early next year. Um, for the browser itself and just uh, being able to see who's been logging in, we don't have any logs for that currently. Um, however, if you're using single sign-on, you can typically look at that through your identity provider. Um, if you're using Azure Active Directory, for example, it has a portal that shows you all the different users and how often they've been logging in. Um, so you can certainly look at that. Uh, but we will be also producing our own uh, logging features uh, along those lines in 6.1. Uh, there's a question about whether year-on-year -year costs can be done as a percentage versus a fixed dollar amount. Um, that's a really good question. So as you may be aware, um, the uh, costs are something that we can calculate using our um, financial calculator that comes with Abacus. It's one of our out-of-the-box algorithms. Um, now with that, it does give you the result in a, uh, a dollar amount. Um, however, what traditionally some customers have done um, is just build some simple scripts uh, that convert that into a percentage. Um, so basically after the uh, script has, or rather after the algorithm has run, they run the script to do that change. Um, the good thing with Abacus 6.0, of course, is now you can have these scripts automatically run um, as soon as you commit so that uh, you don't have to remember to do that. Um, furthermore, um, I'd have to think about this one, but the algorithm, uh, the visual algorithm composer does allow you to do a lot of that visually. Um, so I would suspect that you could probably convert to a percentage um, using the visual algorithm composer um, so that you can have that as an extra property as well. Um, question about when this is available to current customers. Um, so I just mentioned that we will be releasing um, in November. Uh, so I expect it'll be in the next two to three weeks that things will be officially available. Um, if you are on our beta program, uh, you will be hearing from us in the next couple of days about um, getting the latest beta if you haven't already. So um, be on the lookout for that. Um, but certainly we're basically just putting it through our quality assurance program at the moment uh, to make sure that uh, there's no gotchas there. Once we're very happy that uh, everything is working the way that it should, we will be going live. Uh, there's a question about whether any of the features will not be available in cloud. Um, so it's worth distinguishing first. Uh, so Abacus Cloud traditionally has referred to using the Abacus Studio um, deployed as a SaaS solution. Um, so all of the features that have gone into Studio um, with this release are also in the cloud deployment. So it doesn't matter whether you're cloud or whether you're desktop in that sense. Um, now, Abigus Enterprise is a separate platform. So it's web-based, um, whether you have it deployed on site or whether you have it deployed with us. Um, but basically, because it's a web app, it's used through the browser. Um, so it doesn't really matter whether you're using Abigus Cloud or not. Um, it's feature-wise the same. However, you do need to make sure you've got the right licensing to use Abacus Enterprise. Um, actually, that's a good, the next question is about uh, licensing. That's a nice lead off from that last one. Um, what happens with current licensing? How will it be merged with existing offerings? Um, so it won't affect anything that you've currently got. Um, if you have certain things like Abacus Intelligence or Abacus Publisher, uh, that will play into the path going forward. Uh, but the best thing to do would be to talk to your account manager. Um, the paths are uh, different depending on where you are today. Uh, but essentially, you won't be heavily impacted in what you're already using today. Um, it's just a matter of whether there's additional things. Um, you may be um, having to buy an additional license for enterprise if you need to use that and you don't have uh, the uh, requisite licensing already. Uh, so discuss that with your account manager and they'll be able to give you the best path forward for that. Uh, there's a question about whether anchors can be added to uh, symbols in viewpoints or while diagramming. Um, so there's nothing new in 6.0, but it's worth mentioning that we do have the ability to add anchors to lines in um, Abacus Studio already. Uh, so when you're building a diagram, if you hold down the shift key when you click on a line, that will add a node or a pivot to a line uh, so that you can reroute lines. 
Uh, you can also hold down the Alt key and click on a line. Uh, that will uh, give you square routing so that um, it basically adds two nodes or pivots to that line. Um, now the other thing you can do is snap to a specific point on a shape. Um, if I remember, I think you hold down the shift key when you attach the line. Um, so those features are there already. A lot of people aren't aware of them. Um, so have a look and, um, and see if that's something that you can make use of. If you have any questions, just let us know. We can um, certainly get back to you on any specifics. Um, have we deprecated some .NET components or is that the same in 6.0? Uh, we do still use um, .NET. Uh, the version that we're using is uh, 4.6 for .NET. Um, so that's the same as Abacus 5.2 and 6.0. Um, you don't have to change your .NET deployment. With um, uh, the Abacus Enterprise piece, it does also use .NET for some of its components. So um, you do need to have .NET installed there. Um, but if you're using a, a new version of Windows, then uh, typically that doesn't need to be installed anyway. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, when do Abacus Cloud customers uh, get upgraded? So you'll be hearing about that once we go live with um, the release. Um, typically it's in the subsequent days of the official release. Um, depending on whether you're on a um, dedicated hosting solution or whether you're in a multi-tenanted solution, uh, that does affect things as well, uh, but we'll get in touch with you if you have any concerns about uh, when you get updated uh, to make sure it happens at a time when it's least likely to impact you. Uh, do let your account manager know and we can make sure that we work with your schedule. And there's a question about whether there's features uh, to perform governance uh, with information models. Um, so we do already have a lot of that in Abacus. There's nothing specifically too new there in 6.0, uh, but certainly you can build CRUD matrices to show um, who has access to what information. Uh, you can also show which applications are the systems of record for different information entities. Uh, we do have some examples of that in our example project. Uh, so be sure to have a look at that. Um, but if there's anything you're not clear about, let us know and we can certainly discuss it offline. Uh, there's a question about whether there is a, a third party uh, or uh, some kind of, uh, do we support a third party CSV server for data sharing? Um, that's a good question. So I, I think what you're saying there is basically using a, a staging table uh, for doing data integrations. Um, that's certainly something that you can do. Um, typically, you wouldn't use the REST API in Abacus to do that unless you wanted to write an external application uh, that basically parses the information from the CSV to Abacus. Uh, more typically, you would just look at having uh, Abacus import that CSV. Uh, you might have a script in Abacus to do that, or you might be able to use some of the inbuilt um, Excel round tripping capabilities that we have. Um, and so you can basically have Abacus periodically reach out to that staging table and bring the information back into Abacus. Okay, so uh, we've gone just a couple of minutes over our 45 minute slot there. Um, there were a few other questions. Uh, do let us know if we can answer those offline for you. But thanks once again for coming around uh, to this webinar. It's been great to host you and uh, I hope you're excited about the release. I know I certainly am. So we'll look forward to being in touch with you once it is ready and uh, getting you on board as soon as possible.